Good evening, Monsters of the Light. Oh cool, I finally got a 3D background too. And welcome to another edition of Darius's Eerie Endorsements, a series where I talk about games that are perfect for playing around Halloween time. The game we're reviewing in this video is... Downwell for all these platforms. But I'll be looking at the iOS and Nintendo Switch versions for this review. Some of you might be thinking, does this even count as a spooky title? Well, with its dark visuals and its somewhat creepy atmosphere in some levels, I'd say it counts. Plus, Angelos wanted me to cover it, since it's a shooter he really likes. That's right! Anywho, this 2015 indie game is a one-person effort by a Japanese man called Ojiro Fumoto, who I think goes by the alias Moppin. It was published by Devolver Digital. Wow, I think this game turned 6 this year. The console ports were handled by a different studio, I think. So, how does that well play? It's a vertical scrolling shooter and platform game with slight roguelike elements. You play as... well, Taro. To be honest, I didn't even know this guy had a name before doing research for this video. A person that's traversing this deep dark world that's filled with gems, monsters, and the occasional shop, I guess. And the only thing he has to defend himself with are his trusty gun boots. The controls are quite simple. You can move left or right, jump, and fire your gun boots while in midair. You can also wall jump, although it does take a wee bit of time to get the hang of. You kinda keep firing your gun boots forever, as you only have so many charges, and the amount of charges required to fire varies from the gun module you're using. More on those later. An alternate method of defeating enemies is jumping on them, Mario style. Doing so restores your charges as well, so keep that in mind if you're running low. But be careful, not all enemies can be stomped. If they're all red, like these spiky guys, you'll take damage if you attempt to do so. If you manage to take out multiple enemies before touching the ground, you'll start a combo. Get a high number and you'll receive some benefits when it ends. It's best to end it when it reaches 25 as you won't receive any more benefits if you go higher, unless you're going for an achievement or something. World Tower can take up to 4 hits before kicking the bucket, but your health can be restored and upgraded. If you collect 4 units of health while you're already at max, your health will upgrade. Alternatively, you could buy one at the shop, but they are pricey. Destroying things and defeating enemies will have them drop gems. When you consistently collect them, you'll activate what's called a gem high, and while it's active, your shots will be more effective. Occasionally, you'll find these side areas that stop time and won't end your combo. That will contain a few goodies for you. It might be a cave with a bunch of gems, a shop where you can improve your health and charges for gems. Also, the shopkeep gets angry when you go behind the counter, but you can't really steal their stuff, even if you wanted. This ain't spelunky. Or you can find a gun module, along with some health or some charges. The game has 7 different weapons which are all fun to use. Some of my favourites were Noppy, which is similar to the machine gun, only you can slightly aim the direction it fires in. Burst, a 3 round burst weapon that works once when paired with a drone upgrade. And Puncher, just because I love the sound it makes when it's being fired and executing enemies. Mm, now that's satisfying. The levels are randomly generated. So what you see in one playthrough might be slightly different in the next. Downworld has 13 levels in total, 4 worlds with 3 levels each, and a final stage which hosts a boss fight. The third world is different from the rest as it's water themed, and as a gimmick we have to keep collecting air or else you lose health. After finishing a stage, you get to pick an upgrade. There are 21 in total, but you can only choose up to 12 in one run. Each one varies in usefulness, and I won't lie, some of them are absolute garbage. Do not use knife and fork, ever! So instead of going through them all, I'll just list some of my favourites again. Gem powered restores your charges when collecting gems, very useful. Combine it with another upgrade, gem attractor, and you get to achieve a lot of airtime. Gunpowder blocks, which makes blocks that are destroyed make a shot upwards, and also causes the ones next to it to get destroyed in a chain reaction and Youth, which restores 1 HP and gives you an extra choice when selecting your next upgrade. I know that may not sound like much, but it really helps to avoid situations where you have to pick between a bunch of not so great upgrades. 
I always get it as soon as I can. Down well can also be played with 5 different styles. They have to be unlocked with gems first, but these styles can add a bit more flavour to your playthroughs. Usual style is the standard fare, floaty style does exactly what it says on the tin and makes Will Tara more floaty. While this is good for air time and combos, you're easy picking for the flying enemies. Border style which starts you off with more HP, but you have less upgrade choices when you finish the stage. Arm speed style which is my personal favourite, allows you to find more gun modules in side areas. However, shops are rare and gem caves do not appear at all. Then the last one, handstand style, which might as well be an expert mode. Items in the shop are cheaper, but you can't get any upgrades after finishing a stage. Ah, oh, the horror! Another thing you could look with gems are different color palettes. There are some here that resemble other sisters' limited color palettes, which is cute, such as the Game Boy. But I didn't really mess around with these too much. I usually stick with a standard one. After you finish the game, you unlock hard mode. When enemies are more relentless, shop prices are more expensive, and the levels themselves are generally harder to get through. Are you up for the challenge? Oh, I just realized they didn't talk about the visuals or the soundtrack. The graphics are in a 1 bit pixel art style with a touch of red here and there. It's simple, but works really well. As for the soundtrack, it's amazing! There's only a handful of tunes, but this is a short game, so that's to be expected. But what's here though is fantastic. The songs are all catchy chip tunes that really help set the atmosphere. So great job, but uh, I don't think I can pronounce that name. Ugh. And with that, I believe I've covered everything. Man, for a simple indie game, it sure has a lot going for it. And if you're interested in what you see, even only slightly, pick it up because it's actually very cheap on all platforms. But the version I recommend above all is the Switch version. It's really the best of both worlds. And since this game is near very graphic intensive, you will not have to worry about performance drops or anything like that. And for the love of Hades, please play with something with an actual direction pad, like a Pro Controller, a Hori Split Pad Pro, heck even one of those D-Pad Joy-Cons, because those direction buttons aren't gonna cut it, especially for a game that requires instant reactions like this. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this review and found this game super interesting. I've got two more games I plan to cover for the eerie endorsements this year. What will the games be? You'll just have to find out. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and happy Halloween!